New Day Northwest is back. Now from the AAA Travel Alcove, here's Margaret Larson. Welcome back once again. Life is full of twists and turns and our next guest certainly proves it. In her book, Tough Girl, Carolyn Wood shares her story from failing swim lessons to then winning a swimming gold medal in 1960, discovering she's gay and trekking through Spain's Camino de Santiago by herself. Author and gold medal Olympian Carolyn Wood joins me now. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too. Thank so you. So you self-published and now this book has been taken up by Sasquatch, right? That's correct. So you were able to add some things. Tell Tell me what that gave you an opportunity to do. I, um, actually the editor asked if I would add a little bit of what happened before I met Rose, my partner. Mm -hmm. So I wrote about coming out in the 1970s. Um, Not easy. What it was like to go to a gay bar for the first time. Right. And some descriptions of old Portland uh, <laughs> when there were women's bars, a <laughs> sequence of them. So Now this had been left out of your first book because why? I, it didn't seem relevant to what I was writing about. Um, I was mostly writing about the swim story and the Camino story. Um, but there was that third story that weaves yeah. through it. That also took courage. It did. And grit. It did. Um, and, I, and to me that's especially meaningful because we grew up at a similar time when uh -huh. people were not wholly themselves. And that's a weight you carry. It is a weight. and. Having the book out, I've gone to some high school gay straight alliances. Mm -hmm. It's still not easy for kids. No, it is it's, not. And I have grandmothers who come to me and say, I want to buy the book for my granddaughter. I think she wants to come out. And it's just like, oh my gosh, we think it's different. But for many, many people, even in Portland, or Seattle. And that's the thing. It is better for some people. For some people, it's not. Right. And we're not free and not ourselves until you know everyone um, can be who they they truly are. What? So that's one thing that's very different. In, in the book, you describe your Olympic experience right. and, and the grit, obviously, that it took to accomplish that. What do you think is different about today's Olympics? Oh gosh, so much. <laughs> but I would boil it down to the commercialization of athletes of athleticism. Right. The excitement, the, um, the grit, the guts, the, everything that makes athletes great is all still there. But again, there's this added component for sw swimmers, for example, mm -hmm. to please their sponsor, earn money, especially if they've gone through college. When I swam, I had to do it by the time I was out of high school, I felt like, because there were no there was no athletics for women right. in college. Yes, what a good point. And certainly not sponsorships and no. ways to train and continue your Rome, career. Rome was the first Olympics to have television coverage. Yeah, I remember but Billy it wasn't Mills live. and the rest, but it wasn't live. They'd right. fly the film back to New York and would show the next day. <laughs> See, and now yeah. we could broadcast it on our yeah. phones. Such a different, such a different thing. Um, it, in this book, we, you know, we learn a lot about you, but we also learn a bit about ourselves and what it takes to be resilient, what it takes to pursue something. Um, and I'm wondering if you think life would have been very, very different if you'd had all the scrutiny of social media and, and, and the kinds of things that young people are dealing with today as they pursue their athletic career. Maybe. Pluses I, and it's, minuses. It's hard to know. I think when, when someone gets dedicated to a sport or to music, that becomes your world. I don't, I don't feel like I would have had time to be messing around on social media. <laughs> to Instagram and things. No, and I have you know, former students who are musicians, professional musicians. Their time is four hours of practicing the French horn. And then they're thinking about what they're gonna play at the next concert. Yeah. So I think when you're drawn to something and you dedicate yourself to it, you're not in that but it's a good I may point be because naive. as many well as many Olympic athletes as I've interviewed, one thing that almost everybody says is they spend zero time on things they can't control and all of their time on getting better. And I thought, what a good comment that is about how to release from your mind the things right. that don't matter and spend a hundred percent of your effort on on something else. It, tell us a bit about the Camino story and what you want people to take away from this book. I think I've learned what people take away from it, and that is no matter how old you are, it's not too late right. to try something that's 
a little out of your comfort zone, or if you're going through some kind of a transition, maybe you need to pull back from social media or the friends that you've always had and explore who you are. Mm -hmm. And to give yourself permission to test yourself is a way of building resilience. And not thinking that's just a young person. And then come thing. back and tell your story. I think that's the other thing that's powerful. I've done so many book, book clubs and what happens in those book clubs is people talk about their own stories of comebacks, of times that they didn't think they could get through something and have. So I feel like my book is a springboard for other people. And you know, our kids, our kids, our friends need those stories. They do. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. You are an inspiration in so many ways. Carolyn is at Third Place Books in Ravenna tonight at 7 o'clock. Make time and certainly get this book. Coming up, players from the Everett Silver Tips join us to show how they stay so limber and flexible. Look at them over there, all limber <laughs> and flexible. Get Fit is next. Everyday